Given the f of x equals 1 over x plus 2 and g of x equals 4 over x minus 1, and if we want to find f of g of x, what we want to do is take the g of x and plug it into the x of the f of x. Here's what we're talking about. Notice where we have that g of x, I substituted or replaced it with the g of x or 4 over x minus 1. And now it's time to take that 4 over x minus 1, plug it into the x of the f of x, like so. Then, to simplify this, we could go ahead and multiply by x minus 1 to the numerator, and also x minus 1 to the denominator, where if I take that x minus 1 to the numerator, we end up getting simply x minus 1. And if I take that x minus 1, multiply to 4 over x minus 1, the x minus 1, and the x minus 1 cancels out, we're left with just the 4. And then we could take that x minus 1 and multiply to the 2 as well, where we end up with 2 times x minus 1. If we go ahead and simplify this up here, it's going to be x minus 1 all over 2x plus 2. There you have it. That's our f of g of x function. Then, what about the domain of f of g of x? Since the denominator of a function cannot be 0, we'll just take that denominator, or the 2x plus 2, and set it not equal 0, where we have 2x is not equal to negative 2, or x is not equal to negative 1. So that's going to be our do domain, where x is such that x cannot be negative 1. There's a reason I put the words tricky part right there. And the reason for that is when we took that g of x or 4 over x minus 1 into the x of the f of x function, like I did right here, notice that x minus 1 cannot be 0 or x cannot be 1. And that has to be part of our domain as well. Simply put, when we take that g of x into the f of x function, don't forget, after you find the domain of f of g of x, find the domain of g of x as well, and include it into the domain of f of g of x.